and I'm going to try to not burn my house. Every month, we select six people and give them a secret challenge meant to test their creative skills. These challenges span all forms of creativity, and they will only have 10 minutes to complete their creations. This is the C4C and Friends Creativity Challenge. Food. So much of our daily life is centered around food, ranging from our needs for sustenance to culture and identity. But does food have a space in creativity? Today we ask our six competitors to put that idea to the test. Does tea make a good watercolor? Will spices create good pigments? Can sprinkles give that pop of color you need? And eggs? All of this and more in today's creativity challenge, which is pantry paintings. In addition to using food items, our challengers were also asked to paint their images around a favorite fall memory. And so we asked our challengers, what fall memory will they be painting today? In the house that I grew up in, my twin brother and I had like a big room in the basement that we shared. In the basement, there was also a wood stove, all like in the fall and winter when it started getting cold and we started burning that wood stove. Just like that, that wood smoke smell and, and that warmth from the stove, just like takes me right back. Being at Chesapeake Bay. It's a wonderful time of year to go in the fall. And I rented a house on the bay and it had a little beach nearby and it was really nice. I hardly ever saw anybody. It was great. As I was growing up, I would always help my mom go out and rake the leaves in the backyard. And then after we would rake them up into a big enough pile, she'd be like, okay, Go ahead and jump in. You can jump in once, and then we got to rake them back up again. So I would take my opportunity to jump in. Um, so I'm probably going to try and paint that. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I really like jumping in leaves, and I haven't done that since I was a child. My father had three massive trees. I don't remember what they were, but they were large. So we would break up all the leaves into one big pile before he would put them on his burn pile. And I got to jump in and play with them for a couple days. The a chance to explore the outdoors when it's no longer as hot. So going frolicking in the foliage to, to play up whatever uh, similar sounds I can. Just really exploring what colors look like in nature. It's very typical from where I come from. I come from Spain. The signal that the fall started is when you walk through the center of Madrid and you see these people in the corners roasting chestnuts. You buy a cone made of um, newspaper full of chestnuts and yeah, I just love it. I wanted to let you know you were totally like the inspiration behind us doing this challenge um, from your podcast episode with us. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, of course, because of my background, I'm a little bit nerdy about this. So I hope I go too far. And do you have a game plan in mind for this challenge? Not at all. Uh, I brought a little bit of everything for my pantry because I don't even know exactly what colors to use or how mixing them will work. Just maybe start with a tree and try and make some leaves and <laughs> make it work. No, as with uh, most of my paintings that I do, I kind of I kind of just wing it and see what happens. And then I go back and reevaluate, see what lessons I learned and then go from there. I do not. I think I will have to think about layering and not just in an architectural or design sense, but really understanding what is my foundation for my canvas to what's gonna be the, the dynamic color versus bases that I can introduce. So really understanding what components are and how they play together. I just moved into this house. So my food, it was like, it was like a treasure hunt because my food is in many weird corners of the house. So I needed to collect things in advance because if not, I mean, it will be like the Blair Witch Project going around the house trying to, <laughs> trying to find the food. Well, I have quite a few uh, ingredients here. And I think I'm going to go a more uh, abstract route because I think if I try to paint something too realistic, it's going to look like uh, maybe a kindergartner made it. So <laughs> I'm just going to keep it simple and uh, there's, no, there's no wrong way to paint abstract. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> No, I, I mean, I, I think I'm going to try to do the background first. Mm -hmm. We'll see. It's, you know, I expect the materials to be quite watery. The last question we have is, are you ready to begin? Yeah. <laughs> I am ready. I think 
I think I'm ready. I think I'll be ready whenever you are. And with that, our challenge will begin in three, two, one, go. All right. I'm going to read the fridge and I'll see what I can dig up and be right back. I think I'm going to do kind of like a, a top down expressionist look. I got some blueberries, so I'm going to try to smash those up for maybe kind of a purple. They're, they were the old ones in the bottom of the container, so I don't feel too bad about wasting them. Well, this is tea, so it just gets a dip. I'm putting that all over everything, so it's just not stark white. Sauces. Um that I had lying around my house. So I have mustard, sriracha, ketchup, barbecue sauce, I have some relish, and then I have part of a smoothie that I made this morning with kale. But I want to make my own charcoal. I have a candle here and I'm going to burn this and I'm going to pray for this to work. <laughs> I'm going to try to not burn my house. So before we started, I splattered out a lot of cornstarch onto a plate just so I'd have it ready to do some mixing. And now I'm mixing the soy sauce with the cornstarch, uh, which is making this a lot lighter of a brown than I hoped for. So I might just be pouring some soy sauce onto paper here shortly. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what we're going to do with ramen, but it's a staple, so we got to use that, right? Uh, a little bit of texture with breadcrumbs. Nothing is in your kitchen is ever like as vibrant as you want it to be. If you're buying natural stuff that doesn't have a lot of preservatives and dyes in it, natural colors are always more brown than you expect. <laughs> this is blue sugar, and I wonder how that's going to work, because I, I'm hoping that the blue is going to come off and the sugar will actually go away. Um, so I just, I just have to do the, the ground first, so just to get that out the way, and then now I'm just going to work on the, the sky, see how that comes out. I'm going to start with uh, my cinnamon charcoal, it smells great. Now I have some chili powder extra spicy, so hopefully that means extra pigmented. Oof, oof, yeah, ooh, spices with chunks in. Okay, so anything that's not a, a liquid is going to be a gamble problem. The nice thing about using bread as a brush is it's just delicious. Not gonna be a great base, but I have some leftover mashed potatoes, and I feel like that'll give us either texture for uh, a horizon or a grounding. Oh yeah, this is a chunky yellow. <laughs> I also have two kinds of tea, got yerba mate and some, some mint tea that I was hoping would be green, but again, they're both just different kinds of brown. Ooh, coloring. Ooh, oh, oh, look at that. All right, well. That's, we're, now we're gonna have to adjust, aren't we? Suddenly it's gonna be a sunny day of the day. One thing I kind of realized as I was collecting items, a lot of these items are a lot thinner than paint. I wouldn't necessarily have thought like something like a ketchup would be thinner than paint. Doing this, I found out, wow, this is <laughs> a lot thinner. Something else that I'm going to use is gum arabic. And this is used a lot in Middle Eastern food and also for baking. This is also um, part of the medium that you use to make watercolor. This is a great glue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick um, instant coffee. I'm going to put some coffee here. Yeah, turmeric's you know, nice and mixable. Although it is you now just clumping in my brush. I'm gonna go straight for the pouring some stuff onto the canvas. I'm just gonna take this nice uh, blue liquid here and try and make a sky. I like to think of the false sky. So let me think, the best part is again, I'm, I'm gonna be eating as I do this because you can't not eat as you do this. Uh, go ahead and use some sauce. And what I'll do, I'll use it kind of like a, a brush to like hit strokes and then add almost like an evening sky. It's coming out better than I expected it to. <laughs> I didn't expect it to turn out this well, but you can actually uh, you can actually make out with some of these things. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting uh, some very vibrant colors. My my memory has <laughs> a lot nicer looking than like this pile of goo on this piece of paper. Now, the matcha powder. Ooh, this is so good. The matcha is uh, 
part I want to use is muddy, but the rest of it's very liquidy. So probably I should have waited a little bit for the gumarabic to dry because I'm making coffee right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go this and sticks. There are some spots that just aren't taking pigment. And I did use the back of another piece of paper that has something on it. So I don't know if that's what's causing it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's interesting. What if I use ramen kind of like a stamp? I have canned korma. Let me see if I can use it. Make sure it's well shaking. Does that look like a tree kind of? It's not a harsh, but it, it, it does what it does as an ink transfer. The ramen kind of like takes it up. I have a soy sauce packet, a little dark brown, almost black. So now it's gonna start smelling really weird with the paprika and blueberries and soy sauce all mixing together. <laughs> well, the blue sugar is not as vibrant as I thought. So there's a little bit of blue uh, food coloring that accidentally dripped on the water. So we'll just spread that around more. I watch a lot of videos on YouTube of just different like landscape paintings and whatnot. A lot of people, a lot of the people that I watch actually use Q-tips to do leaves on trees and leaves on the ground. So I was like, oh yeah, this will be a good time to, to try and try that out and see how it works. Last thing I thought about using is turmeric root. So this is being used as actually pigment, making lights with it forever. To put it together, I'm going to use egg. This is being typically used also as a medium for paint since forever. So I just uh, collected the egg white and I'm going to use it with turmeric and hope that it works. I'm gonna see if I can get just a little bit of this yellow green out of the lemon juice. That will just have to be the ground color. Brussels sprouts that also have a lot of garlic in them and are delicious. This looks like a kid like playing with their, their dinner. This, this <laughs> My mom would be so disappointed. Right, we're gonna go in a different direction. Oh, that yellow just really did some damage. Oh well, it gives the impression of water. Only a little bit of water. I have some sprinkles. I'm gonna try and just for a little bit of abstraction, like put a person in my leaf pile and see if somehow I can get these sprinkles to stay. Let's see if we can add a little bit of a waxing or a waning moon here off into the distance. It's like finger painting at this point. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, and done. Hands off. Ta da. Gross. <laughs> oh, no. I, I think I'm going to call it for now. My person's a little too small. I realized that the moment that I stopped uh, panicking. And so now it's time to see how they did. Okay, so I just wrote the word chestnut in Spanish. Castañas. Yeah, it's a little bit messy, but... Yeah, no, in, in my quote-unquote professional life uh, at the School of Pharmacy, I teach the process of design thinking where you have to really be focused on show, don't just tell your idea. So it was really a, a neat way to share under the constraints of time and some of our limited repertoire of food <laughs> what the outcomes could be. Good lesson in food color and painting. This is incredibly bright. Would have liked some green uh, for my grass, but other than that, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, it was definitely hard to hard to get some of the definition on some things, but overall, I don't I don't think it's too too bad. It was you know it makes me really appreciate like modern paints and pigments, and like we don't have to go out and make them ourselves. So that's nice. <laughs> in my case, since I'm 
I'm an artist and I'm used to use professional grade materials. I thought about all these things like theoretically in my head that should work, but it was a big unknown and I'm glad that kind of did. <laughs> yeah, and you know what, you know, when you're buying paint, you know what it's gonna be. Here it's like, oh, what's that ketchup gonna be? I don't know. I have a mantle up above my computer. I display paintings that I messed up and I keep those up there simply because those, act, those are actually my favorite paintings because it was like I learned something from doing it. Well, it will be something interesting. It will be to ask everyone to keep their masterpieces somewhere in a corner, like probably covered and revisit it like in five months from now and see what <laughs> other organisms. <laughs> Came, <laughs> came down just to enhance the beauty of the painting.